Join me on my 17-day, 767-kilometer journey with my bicycle camper. I'll be riding from Gatineau to the Citroën du Nord multi-use trail and back. In part one, you will follow me encountering closed roads, hills too steep, scenic farming areas, and a few days at my brother-in-law's cottage on beautiful Moray Lake, and we finish part one at a campground close to the famous trail. In part two, we'll travel the entire 201 kilometers of the Petit Rhin du Nord trail in all types of weather, from its northern trailhead in Mont Laurier to kilometer zero in St. Jerome. Finally, in part three, we head west and across the Ottawa River to return to Gatineau through the beautiful rural roads of eastern Ontario in bright sunshine and in pouring rain. I had planned a short ride for the first day, just 21 kilometers from home, in order to get me on my way and to allow me a period of rest after weeks of preparation. I had reserved a service campsite at Ange Gardien Campground, the red spot near the word Gantineau on the map. The name of the campground was appropriate since I was relying on my guardian angel to look after me for the next couple of weeks. While I was pedaling up this long steep hill, the bike slowed down to a crawl and the motor almost stalled. I realized that it was the first time I had ridden the pedigo up a hill as steep as this with a fully loaded camper. On past trips with this bike, I had traveled mostly on level roads. I had cause for concern. Since I was a little rushed during the last day of preparation, I had left the purchase of my first night's supper until now. I'm heading east on Davidson Road in order to avoid any major highways. I just turned left onto La Brasse and I'm going to ride across uh, Highway 50 and then take a, a hopefully quiet country roads. I had never been at this end of La Brasse Boulevard and had no idea that it was so hilly north of Highway 50. This was going to be a really good test of the 500 watt Pedigo motor. Too good. At one point it just gave up and I had to push the bike and use the throttle to help it along the rest of the way up. I was having misgivings about venturing in the Laurentian mountains with this setup. In case you aren't familiar with electric bikes, let me explain. The motor of an electric bike can be activated either automatically just by turning the pedals or manually by working a throttle, like a motorcycle. My Pedigo has a half-twist throttle, like this. It is a spring-loaded ring on the handle grip that I turn with my thumb and index finger. The half-twist grip gives me a perfectly precise control over the desired speed so it's possible for me to walk the bike and to use the throttle to adjust the bike speed to my walking speed. When I dismounted after the motor stopped, the bike was relieved of 170 pounds. With the reduced weight, the motor had enough power to propel the bike and camper up the rest of the hill. All I needed to do was to hold the bike upright and guide it while controlling the throttle. When walking up this very steep incline with a camper, I was walking very slowly because, well, well, I might as well say it, I'm not as fast as I once was. And with the throttle, I was able to adjust the bike speed to my slow pace. I'm discovering that the Chambord road is strewn with potholes and extremely bumpy, like many streets in Gatineau and in the province of Quebec. For many years, Quebec has been neglecting its road infrastructure. Just like you can't neglect repairing a leaky roof if you don't repair potholes and cracks. They rapidly break down and in the end it costs a lot more than if the defect had been repaired promptly. 
Then I'll be turning right on Lorraine Boulevard. And unbeknownst to me, there is a surprise waiting for me around the corner. Well, this is a problem. I'm supposed to turn here onto the train, and it says that the bridge is closed. I was depending on Google Maps to redirect me, but with the bridge closure, the web mapping service didn't know what to do. So I continued south to Maloney Boulevard, which is what I should have taken in the first place instead of the country roads, and saved me almost an hour. Maloney Boulevard is flat, but has an irregular cycle lane not in very good condition. Site and um, this part here is pretty nice, pretty friendly for bicycles. I think I'm almost there. I just heard my GPS say something. Yep, this would be it on the left here. And it says that it's open. I phoned ahead of time and they said there'd be room for me. Okay, so I have a visit visitors here, Mr. and Mrs. Lausanne, who are very curious about my little invention. It's <laughs> 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 a good thing I had planned a short trip that day because the bridge closure made the 22 kilometer trip into 31 kilometers. What I had predicted, uh, that detour cost me a lot of time. But I got here around 1.30 and uh, set, set up camp and uh, had some lunch. And, uh, Pretty soon, it's presently almost 5 o'clock, I'm going to have a little drink and uh, put some supper together and um, tomorrow morning we'll see if I can wake up early enough to get an early start because tomorrow is going to be another hot day. I'd rather do all my cycling before noon if I can. Having a bowl of dry cereal and a coffee to get me started. Um, a quick, easy breakfast so I can get on the road as quickly as possible. Well, I'm off to Roger's cottage, and uh, now we'll see whether the pedigo can get me there with all those hills. Detour. I decided to ignore the sign and take a chance. Sometimes there is a way for pedestrians and bicycles to go through. And thanks to my guardian angel, that's exactly what happened. The construction crew waved me right through. This is the direction I came from, and uh, now we're heading for Buckingham, I think. Well, I had to stop for some groceries on the way, and it just happened that Giant Tiger was exactly on my route. Okay, now we've arrived at Highway 309.
had to stop here to change batteries. We rode through the tiny town of Val des Bois and are now crossing the Lievre River to take Highway 307 southward for a few kilometers. Lievre, by the way, means hare, H-A-R-E. It flows south from the Michimanicus Reservoir and empties into the Ottawa River at Maison Angers. It used to transport logs to a sawmill at the confluence of the two rivers. We're now on beautiful Highway 307. Even though it doesn't have a shoulder, this part is relatively good for cyclists because it offers such delightful views and because of its light traffic. Okay, we've reached Thibault Road. Just a few kilometers of dirt road and we'll be there. We're almost there. This is a typical cottage road, actually. I hadn't thought about this particular hill. I think this is the longest and, and um, steepest of the hills on this dirt road. And uh, my, over, my motor overheated and stopped. So uh, I'm going to wait, give it a chance to cool down, and hopefully I'll be able to get the rest of the way up the hill. Um, the alternative might be to ask Roger to come and physically help me push the bike up the hill. I think this is the last steep one, and uh, after this I should be okay. And that's exactly what happened. The motor restarted after cooling down for half an hour, but the gravel was so loose that the wheel just spun no matter how slowly I tried to control it with the throttle. So I needed Roger to help me push the bike and camper the rest of the way up the hill. Well, I got some help. Uh, my brother-in-law, Roger, uh, came over and uh, helped me with the actual pushing and uh, I th think it's a success. Now I just have a kilometer or so of easy road to go. Uh, another bad luck, uh, the bicycle fell and when it fell the chain jumped off its, uh, the chain ring. So now we have to get the thing back on the chain ring and it's very difficult with a pedigo. Uh, come to another problem here um, in order to get to my camping spot I have to go over this little ditch and I'm looking at this to see what would be the easiest way um, otherwise if, I, if I'm not careful I can break uh, the tongue support so I'm gonna try to bring it around this side here and see if it works Roger came to the to my assistance once again. Wow. Oh, I can't, I can't 
voiture qui va partir quelque part. Euh, oui, ça, ça va faire. Oui, ok, c'est bon, c'est bon. D'abord, ma chérie, je vais être Peut-être, madame. Excellent. Ok. Excellent. Bon. Day two of my trip concludes with another 62 kilometers on the odometer, including three kilometers on gravel road. Paired with a hill too steep, a rebellious chain and a ditch to traverse, this felt like a big day for me. Now I was ready for a well-deserved tall glass of sangria, which Marielle had in store for me. This is my campsite. I just got up, it's uh, six o'clock in the morning and uh, it's so quiet here. You wouldn't believe. That's the cottage and uh, going down to the lake. couple of picnic tables here. That's where I'm going to sit down to have my coffee this morning. Everybody else is sleeping, so uh, I'm going to, let's go and have a look at the lake. When you navigate the shore of a lake in the Gatineau area, you'll notice that many cottage lots are devoid of trees and have manicured lawns that stretch from the house to the edge of the water. This destruction of nature is very bad for the environment and for the quality of the lake water. Removing the natural shoreline vegetation invites soil erosion and allows pesticides and fertilizers to contaminate the lake. Being an engineer, Roger is aware of it, and he has adopted the policy of removing as few trees as possible and leaving the natural vegetation intact. Roger isn't the only cottage owner on this lake who cares about the environment. The Moray Lake Cottage Association passed a resolution forbidding internal combustion engines for propelling boats. So only muscle power, wind power, or electric power are allowed. These glacier-carved lakes are all surrounded by hills and mountains, so it's no surprise that the entrance to Roger and Marielle's property is from the top of a steep hill. Their daughter and son-in-law arrived yesterday afternoon and they'll be taking their son, the little boy you saw when I arrived with my camper, back home in the city. Roger is very conscious of the environment. He considers everything as resources that must be saved and reused, like these piles of firewood, lumber, and construction materials, which he keeps protected from the elements. Everybody's sleeping. This is a present that Mother Nature left us after the last glaciation. I decided I'd go for a little ride to the village, Val des Bois, and have a look around without the trailer. This is the south end of Val des Bois, and I just noticed this reserve Fanic, which is a wildlife reserve, so it might be worth having a look at. This seems to be the reception office, so I'll go and have a look. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, ok. D'accord. Only two people at a time in the uh, reception area. So I was kicked out and I'm going to wait my turn. I didn't know anything about this provincial park, just an hour's drive from home. This is a map of the 1600 square kilometer park. There are five reception offices and 15 different access points to the park. It's possible to rent canoes, rowboats, kayaks, gas motors, pedalos and bicycles. The green portion at the north end is reserved for wilderness camping, accessible only by canoe. I just picked up a bottle of wine for my host. I just got back from the village and I badly need a nap. That's one of the downsides of aging, I'm afraid. Bye for now. As I was dozing off, I was thinking back to the wise words of a friend of mine who said, Old age is a privilege denied to many. And this thought lulled me to sleep. When I woke up, I was thinking, the nice thing about this camper is that the floor is perfectly flat compared to a tent where you might have bumps and branches and stones uh, sticking out from the floor. One technological tool that I needed on this trip was access to the internet. Many campgrounds don't provide internet service and most of the time those that do only offer a hotspot near the office and without a comfortable place for sitting down. After my much needed rest, I created a mobile hotspot on my phone and for the rest of the trip was able to go online with my laptop using my phone data package. That allowed me to respond to my email messages and YouTube comments, to use Google Maps to plan my routes, and to search for campgrounds that accepted campers that didn't have their own toilet facilities. Because of government-imposed COVID-19 restrictions, the majority of campgrounds had closed their toilet facilities and didn't accept tents and tent trailers. Because I can't travel long distances due to my physical condition, this was to be a major difficulty for the entire trip. After a copious steak dinner with my hosts, I retired early even though the next day would only take me a short distance. On this day three, I only rode my bike to the village and traveled 18 kilometers without the camper behind me. Because of COVID-19 restrictions, I wasn't able to find evenly spaced out campgrounds between here and Mont Laurier, so I opted for staying overnight at Camping Val de la Lièvre, only 18 kilometers from here. I chose to take my time, enjoy the peaceful view of the lake, and had a hearty second breakfast with my hosts. A big improvement over my bowl of cereal. Roger follows me up the steep hill in case I can't make it. Then he follows me along the entire Kibo Road. That's Highway 307 ahead. And here's where we part company. Well, I'm now in Val de Bois, the municipal uh, rest stop. And um, I have to go for a little visit to the uh, blue and yellow buildings there. I had arrived at my campground. I had reserved the day before, but didn't know that I was to be the only camper with a tent site. So I had the bathroom facilities entirely to myself. I set up my red tarp because it started to rain and uh, just a sprinkle but prior to that uh, there was a cold front that came a very big change in temperature and uh, that usually means that there's a storm coming but I'm not sure we're going to have the storm 
they were calling for an 80% chance of storm. So maybe that means 20% chance of no storm. No such luck. I made my supper under the red tarp, worked on my computer inside the camper with rain falling around me, and heard rain come and go during the night. I'm off bright and early. I suppose dull and early because it's not really a bright day. Uh, but there are blue spots in the sky, so that looks good. Um, so I'm heading now for Notre Dame de Pomme, and I'll be staying at a campsite called L'Escargot. So I'll be able to get some fresh fruit and vegetables here. We've now arrived at a small town called Notre Dame du Lot and uh, just getting across the bridge. That was just a stream that emptied into the Lievre River and this is the Lievre River here. And uh, there's a bridge that crosses over to Highway 307. This is Notre Dame du Lot. The town was named after the apparitions of Mary in Saint Etienne du Lot in France in the 18th century. I don't know the meaning of the word low with that spelling. Just as a point of trivia, in French the sound O can be spelled 11 different ways if you count all the singulars, the plurals, and the grammatical exceptions. Uh, a little dollar store. Hmm. We'll take a little detour here to have a look at Lake Campion. I notice there's a road along the lake and I think uh, we'll be able to get off that road on, back onto Highway 309 at the other end. It's also a good test for my GoPro to see how good the stabilization is because this is very bumpy and hopefully it's not going to look so bumpy on the, um, on the video. The camera I was using on this trip was a brand new GoPro 8 Black action camera. When I viewed the footage I took on this short gravel road, I was amazed at the incredible ability of the camera at stabilizing the shaky film sequence. I was holding the camera by hand, and my hand was bouncing up and down. Oh well, we have a, a clutch of Canada geese. And we're heading back to Highway 309. I just wanted to stop and show you this. The reason why you have to be very careful when you're riding a bike. Uh, this is at the bottom of a hill past a curve and uh, the shoulder is completely covered with uh, with gravel. Now, if there's heavy traffic, it could be a problem because you have, you can't ride through this stuff unless you really slow down to almost a stop. So you have to be aware of what's going on. So we've arrived at Notre Dame de Pomme and we're crossing the Lievre River.
Like all Quebec villages, this one has its church with a high steeple pointing the way to eternal happiness. Arrived at Camping Miscargo. <laughs> this will be the view that I'm going to have. And uh, this is the campsite that I've chosen there. I had a choice of the three or four different campsites. So, let's get set up. I should mention that Camping this Cargo charges only $25 a night for those who arrive by bicycle. This is the second time I happen upon a campground owner who offers a special price for cyclists. Last year I stayed at Cedar Shade Campground in Ontario that charged me only $10. To put it in context, on this trip the price varied from a low of $37.94 at Camping Manitou to $60 at Camping Donald in Mirabel, tax included. Often the price is $10 lower if the campground offers non-serviced sites. All told today, I traveled 42 kilometers with the camper in tow and 4 kilometers without the trailer for a trip into town. Might as well look civilized. This is Tuesday, August 18th. It's day 6 of my trip and I just left uh, Les Cargo camping. And I like to wait until the noise is over. And I'm on my way to Camping Manitou. So it's Manitou Camping. Uh, it's not on the same road as uh, Mont Laurier. It's on Highway uh, 311, which apparently is a lot more scenic, according to my hosts at Camping Les Cargo. And I'm pretty lucky, rain is still uh, at bay and um, it's uh, the sort of cloudy and mixture of cloud and sun. Hope that continues like this. Okay, we've come to Highway 311 North and this is where I'm turning. Apparently it's a quiet road, much less traffic than 309 and apparently it's more scenic. So uh, all in all, I think this will be a better choice. We'll see. This area of the world is strewn with lakes. In fact, uh, I think there's something like 500,000 lakes in the province of Quebec alone. Uh, they were carved out by the glaciers, the receding glaciers, at the end of the last glaciation. Um, this bridge uh, um, it goes across a, a strait between two lakes here. So, consequently, just about anybody of middle class in this area can afford a waterfront property uh, because there are so many of them. I came across this herd of happy looking cows by the fence. The black cow is actually a bull. A very lucky boy indeed, since these days cows are generally bred by artificial insemination.
we've reached the little town of Chiamica. And this is City Hall on the other side. And I stopped at this park just to have a little bit of a rest. This kind of rest. Come across the sawmill. I enjoy taking my time. Stop and take pictures like this. Time to smell the flowers, so to speak. Look out, here she comes. I've arrived at Camp Manitou and this is the site that uh, the fellow has offered me. Uh, the surface is very rough. Um, even for my camper, it's not easy to find a, a suitable place, but imagine somebody wanting to put a tent here. be difficult to sleep. But anyways, that's not really a problem. The problem is that there's no picnic table here. And uh, that is something that uh, I need. Uh, that's my, I'm going to be here for two days. And the picnic table is my kitchen. So I have to find Peter and uh, see uh, what he can do for me. I finally got my campsite problem sorted out. Um, Peter changed me to another campsite. Um, and then we had to transport the table from the, uh, the, uh, the uh, site next to it. But finally, after an hour, um, I'm settled down and um, I'm putting down a, a tomato sardine sandwich, which is delicious. I can tell you at 2.30 in the afternoon, yes, it's delicious. I always carry Baby Bell cheese with me when I'm traveling. It's a very good source of protein. Each one of these contains five grams of protein, which is as much as a medium egg. The other thing is that it keeps forever without refrigeration and on top, the best of all, watch this. Best of all, that you do this with it. Highway 311 and the roads along Lac Francois lived up to their promise. Pleasant countryside views and very little traffic and the weather cooperated the whole 44 kilometers. Here at Manitou Campground, I'm four kilometers from the trail. So far, I've traveled 292 kilometers, including 92 kilometers without the trailer. I've calculated that so far to charge my batteries, I've used about four kilowatt hours of power from the electrical grid or about 40 cents worth of electricity. I wanted to compare the energy I used to get here under the power of the electric bike to how much I would have used if I had had my daughter take me, the bike, the camper and my gear to my starting point with her SUV. I've converted the four kilowatt hours it took to charge the batteries into gasoline equivalent energy and it came to 0.47 liters roughly half a liter, or about an eighth of a gallon. If we compare this to the SUV's consumption, we find that I used about a hundred times less energy for travel by riding my bicycle to this destination. Thank you for having joined me on the first leg of my trip. I'll soon publish part two, Riding the Strain, and I hope you'll come along with me. In the meantime, Never quit cycling.